This conference will now be recorded. Uh, hello, everyone. Good evening. I hope you are studying well. Uh, inshallah, today we'll uh, discuss the method of teaching. Uh, basically, you know, there is many educational strategies for learning and for teaching. So I will try to make it uh, uh, more simplified. So first, I uh, wanted to know what this mean by teaching and learning. So the teaching and learning, it's a way of checking or for a change in behaviors of your learning. And this change may be related to the performance of skills or demonstrate of understanding or change in behavior and attitude. That is uh, the outcome of teaching and learning. There are many different teaching approach and activities to help learning to take place. So we'll discuss here mainly about the method of teaching. Yeah, this is the purpose of teaching and uh, learning about the knowledge and goals. So, educating others is a central role of clinician. Hippocrates placed a doctor role as the teacher before that a clinician in his house. The General Medical Council, GMC, in its publication, the doctor as a teacher states that all doctors have a professional obligation and contribute to the education and training to all of the other doctors, medical students, and non-medical health care professionals on the team. So all the clinicians are uh, teacher and professor. Okay. So what is the definition of teaching and learning? Anybody knows what does it mean by teaching? So the, the definition of teaching is purposeful intervention with the aim of promoting, facilitating, and causing learning. So this is the definition of teaching. And the definition of learning is a process by which a change occurs through development or advancements of the mental and physical and emotional abilities. So the learning is a process by which there is change occurs through the development of mental and physical and emotional abilities. So this is uh, meaning by teaching and learning. Basically in learning, we have two types of learning, the service learning and deep learning. Anybody knows? about what is mean by service learning and deep learning have an idea the service learning it's much about the idea and about the content and the knowledge and the information this is this is the service learning and the deep learning it is involves the process of information and critical thinking is how to relate or extend or transfer that knowledge. That is the difference between the deep learning and service learning. Service learning is about the idea, the content, the knowledge, and the information. And the deep learning is about to extend or to transfer this information. That is the difference between uh, so service, service learning and deep learning, okay? So this is uh, about learning pyramids, okay? Okay, this is the learning pyramids. What is the benefit of this pyramids? There is many studies that vary that study shows there is about the retaining information about each of the methods of teaching. So there is many studies 
done for to compare between a lot of method of teaching and this is about retaining information okay it's different between the passive method and the active method if more than active there is more uh, retaining information there is high percentage so this is the most effective one okay first we'll discuss about the retain information about the lecture as you know the lecture is one of the most ineffective method ineffective because it's the only retaining information is about five percent so this is uh why we said this is uh lecture is is the most ineffective method for learning and retaining information because the only retaining information is five the second one is about the reading reading also is the still one of the most less effective method for learning and retaining information is about only 10 percent and the audio visual is also about only retaining information is about 20 percent while in this audio visual learning method maybe i uh, have various uh, methods like audio visual learning and teaching tool including video sound picture and graphics and it is be be better than lecture and reading it is about 20 percent the next one is the demonstration in in this methods usually involves the teacher or professor providing a student a learning task that they can observe so learning by demonstration and this about the retaining information is about 30 percent okay and in discussion or group discussion the retaining information is about 50 percent is it is so effective and the most effective uh, one is the practice by doing this is the one of the most effective method of learning and study practice by doing and the most effective one is teach the other it is about the return information is about 90 percent so here look for the auditory and visual and this is the active methods there is a difference between the learning methods so the most important and most effective one is the teaching by others so teach each others and this is the retain information about 90 percent is it clear is it clear okay here i will discuss about the modern educational strategies as we said before there is many educational strategies <clears throat> the traditional modules for undergraduate and postgraduate medical education are the classroom modules in which students learn through attendance at lecture or practical classes where student or junior doctor work in clinical setting with senior staff acting as role modules this is about traditional modules the former runs the risk of simply being has mean to deliver information and promoting superficial or service uh, learning and the forcing the student from the job so this is about the modern modern uh, educational strategies what about the new uh, educational strategies the new educational strategies are designed to promote deep learning so modern is mainly about the service learning but the new one is uh, designated to promote the deep learning and critical thinking by exploration of knowledge learning through 
curiosity and self-direction to, to tra transfer uh, the knowledge. And they include, this is the new educational strategies, more than lecture, which is the uh, uh, traditional methods. Self-directed learning, SDL, um, problem-based learning, PBL, task-based learning, integration and simulated environment. This is the most uh, modern educational strategies. So we'll discuss uh, later separately. What does it mean by self-directed learning? Self-directed learning moves the emphasis from the teaching and the teacher to the learner. And the learning, for example, away from emphasis and how something is being taught and by who and towards the person who is doing the learning and ensuring that the learning objective has been achieved. So in these methods, each teacher is responsible for ensuring that the student in their class and have the necessary skills to work independently in as a self-directed way. So it's very important to assess your student and have the necessary skill to work independently and as self-directed way. The important role of this teacher here, just to raise student and awareness of the role in learning here to direct the student for the important things and the important of this methods it is allowed the student to be more effective learning and social being so it is about very important to make a learner is more effective so this is the the, the purpose of this uh, methods it is to to be uh, to allow the student to be more effective. What about the problem-based learning? In this technique, learners are given a problem or a case to discuss. In this technique, so you give the a small group of students, a topics or case should be discussed in a small group. Use the self-directed learning, they are encouraged to identify and research their own learning objective, incorporating scientific, clinical, psychological, social, ethical, professional, and public health state. So, for example, you have, you have a small group of midwife and medical student to give a topic of termination of uh, pregnancy for fetal abnormalities. So what is the role of teacher here? The role of teacher here just to facilitate the training learning. That is to facilitate and to ensure the discussion take apart and everyone participate in discussion and also to guide the student for neglected important area and also to keep the discussion is focused so this is the the major role of the teacher here in this methods and uh, bbl so if you you wanted to do a ppl or problem problem based learning you should provide a lot of resource in clinic, like uh, in this case, termination of, uh, of pregnancy, you should provide the ultrasound session, library and internet. Also, this should be provided for uh, a student to, the, to, to make this discussion is more painful. This is the, about the problem based learning. This picture show, this is the module for 
PBL, small group, about 78 students, and already have a topics or cases to discuss, and you should provide all the material for this student, and then you can observe and to direct uh, discussion and to facilitate discussion and to uh, keep the discussion focused. This is the role of the teacher. So in BBL, the steps in BBL, the process begins with a patient problem. So uh, every student has the same problem. Resource accompanies the problem, including details, objective, print material, originally primary book chapters, audiovisual resource, original slide tape show, multiple choice self-assessment exercise are the sources faculty. This is material should be available during discussion. And student work in small groups, sometimes called tutorial groups. Six to eight student pair groups are over recommended. The small group are moderate, moderated by one or more faculty facilitator, some called tutors, should be organized by tutors. Students determine their own learning need to address the problem, make assignment to each others to obtain necessary information, and they return to report what they have learned and continue with the problem. It is, is it clear about problem-based learning? Uh, in case of case-based learning, this is very simple, male interpretation, interprofessional education versus triggers learning by using real cases. Here, in this case, we use a real cases and incidents and authorized scenario drawn from the senses of past experience. So this is natural format because of the participating professors are likely to be familiar with the learning in this way we, and because relevance or to the concern of participation should be achievable. So this is mainly by real cases uh, regarding the case-based learning. So what about the simulation? The term simulation covers everything from tabletop exercise and simple role play, example telephone call, uh, the medium predictability simulation in clinical skill centers and to the high fidelity clinical simulation supported by sophisticated uh, technology or highly skills simulated patient. Uh, simulated environments such as world environment are useful for interprofessional education initiative, assessing good practice, multidisciplinary working, and human part training. The purpose of simulation includes the following providing a safe learning environment because you are doing learning on the mannequin, not in the uh, real patient. So, providing uh, a safe learning environment, patient safety that protect a patient and learners where mistake can be allowed to occur as learning opportunities. This is one of the benefits of simulation. Providing learning opportunities that do not disrupt the normal delivery of care, speeding up or slowing the passage of time to enhance learning, Allow repeated practice, preferably after feedback or self-assessment. This is also the most important benefit because you can repeat practice. So difficult to repeat practice in real patient. 
providing many many good informative formative exposure to the things not yet experienced to or only rarely experienced. Creating appropriate level of this juncture uh, to stimulate learning. This is about the simulation. Yeah, this is uh, about simulation session. So here, the, the most important is about the formal educational strategies, because there's a lot of question uh, came in exam asking about the formal educational strategies. So the first one is the lecture. Before we said in the learning pyramids, the lecture is the most ineffective method of retaining information because all about 5% of retain information. So the lecture are the commonest method of teaching within medicine. They can be a useful way in introducing a topic or subject to the audience or effective, an effective way for experts to talk about the subject in a defined time period or to a large audience. So you select the topics and uh, introducing our topics to the audience. This is the educational talk to the audience and it is teaching method with which is clinician are comfortable. Traditional lecture during which information is imported to a basically receptor audience have been the maintenance of undergraduate and postgraduate education for centuries. Uh, but there is increasing body of evidence questioning the place of this style learning in medical education. Only a small, small percentage of information delivered during a lecture is retained, about 5%, and even what is told does not quite to what is learned. So this picture shows <clears throat> the lecture. These uh, tips for to produce the best possible lecture, including the following. Ensure that the topics is best led by training. This is the invitation to put everything and our fields of available times. Ensure that is meet the trainee learning objective by making yourself aware of curriculum. The important one is to summarize before you finish. Provide the student with same self-assessment question to ensure their understanding and provide some additional resource for the you have you hope you have simulated to learn further. This is about the tip for the lecture. Here how to organize the lecture, introduction, and body and conclusion. Also here, the advantage of lecture and limitation of the lecture. Okay. What about the one minute preceptor? Let's discuss about the lecture. And then the important one is the one minute preceptor. Preceptor, it is means the teacher. Okay, here is all the role of the teacher here, just to give example, not take more than one minute. Okay, so that is why we said this is the one minute preceptors. This is a five step process that can be carried out in minutes with purpose of instruction and teacher opportunities that arise in clinical environment. This is, Example for of teaching methods that demand a good board between the teacher and the learners. The teacher must make the learner feel secure and allow to voicing of opinion where they are correct or incorrect. So we have five steps here. 
the first one is the commitment and the second is justification application positive reinforcement and correct or mistake so a commitment they mean they ask the learner to outline the diagnosis or to many to put management plan so this is uh, mean by commitment and justification here the question learner for reason so the about the question learners for reason and application here to teach the general rule and positive reinforcement mean provide feedback on what was done well and correction of mistake to correct errors and suggest what could be improved this is about the five steps in case of one minute preceptors teaching we'll discuss uh, in details there are multiple channels to teach the clinical setting the one minute preceptors is a learning centered centered uh, module for effective and efficient teaching and clinical settings that can help to overcome these channels it is consists of five micro skills. It is mentioned already. So we'll discuss this. This is the five micro skills, one minute preceptors, and we'll get the student to take stand, or as before said, ask the learner to outline diagnosis or meaning by plan, prop for supporting evidence. This is a question, learner, and teach general rules provide positive feedback. This is a positive reinforcement and correct correction of mistake. It is correct of errors. It is clear. I will give you an example for uh, one minute preceptor to be clear. Okay. okay, for example, here the teacher only give example for the learners. For example, if you have a patient, <clears throat> pregnant woman came to antenatal care, sorry, and patient have admitted to labor ward with painless vaginal bleeding. So this is the, the scenario, or this is the example. So the learner should be, have take five steps. So in the first steps, it is commitment. I'll get the student to take a stand. So don't show your view on these cases before the learner have uh, get opportunity to for expression so give time for a student to express and to talk about these cases okay the second step is justification asking the learner to provide evidence from woman history and examination so the next step is to justification by ask a question. So it is very important to take history and relevant examination. This is the second step. The third step, teach general rules or illustration. So we'll discuss about the uh, volume of blood loss, about the, what is mean by bailless postpartum hemorrhage. So we'll discuss the important keywords in the scenario. The first one is provide positive feedback here to reinforce what the learner did correctly. So you should reinforce what the learner did correctly. And the fifth steps 
to correct us. Here should uh, here is the correction of mis mistake. Here the the main issue of this steps to correct the correction of mistake. So this is about example for about one minute preceptors. So the teacher give example for case as the bellless uh, postpartum hemorrhage. So the first the first step is to avoid to express your view and give the student chance to express about uh, topics. And the second one is justification, gives the patient a chance to take the history and examination to, to, to reach for differential diagnosis. And the third is about teaching the general rules about the how to measure the blood volume and what I mean by bellus uh, intrapartum hemorrhage, maybe due to placenta previa. And the fourth one, provide positive feedback. So uh, reinforce what the learner did correctly. And the last one is to correction of mistake. This is the step of one minute preceptors. Is it clear? Any question? Yeah. Hello. Yes, clear. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, brain storming. This is a recall, uh, February 2020. There's one question about the brain storming. Uh, this is, is a spontaneous group discussion to produce idea and way of solving a problem. The, in, in exam question, uh, ask about the spontaneous group of students to solve uh, a project. So the, the definition of brain is torn. Okay. The clinical teacher here may use the, this method to promote clinical and critical thinking in trainees who are relatively early stage in this career. Uh, brainstorming sessions are simple and effective methods of generating ideas and suggestions. So this is the main issue of the brainstorming to generating ideas and suggestions. The objective of any brainstorm is to generate to a large number of ideas without warning too much about their quality and the raw result and then start and protrize. So feel free to, to discuss anything, even a stride. So uh, you, you didn't worry about the quality of your uh, idea and about your discussion. We're running a brainstorming session issues or question need to be fine. Training working as for- Dr. Fat, can I ask one question? Welcome. What is the difference between uh, brainstorming and uh, problem-based learning? Because in both the thing, in both uh, uh, type of this one, the students will sit together. So in brainstorming, yes. the teacher will not be like seeing. Like in uh, PBL, teacher is guiding, like don't have extra discussion. So this is the difference? In BBL, here BBL, we have a topics or cases, and there's a small group, okay, a small group of students, and discuss the same topics, and and have a tutor to direct uh, the discussion, and the teacher only have a small role here for uh, direct the student, and not participate in the discussion. Okay. And brainstorming here, you have here to produce idea about something. Yeah. Uh, you, 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 if you have a project and want about the new idea, so you have produced idea and a way to solve the problem. So it is different from PBL. Okay, okay. Uh, no, my point? I think because yeah, over the, uh, the PBL is the, the discussion is structured structured already because if you have a cases i will guide the 
a discussion we have give about uh, for example we have cases of postpartum hemorrhage if you want to to do uh, problem based learning i will give this to you then case of postpartum hemorrhage okay. then i will give already some point important point should be followed by the student this objective you have already i have objective for this discussion so i will direct the student to where this is to achieve this objective so it okay. is directed in okay, okay. a brainstorming here we have uh, open discussion uh -huh, to, uh, okay, to okay. generate idea and suggestion about uh, uh, some problem specific problem so this is different sure. okay so okay, it is sure. a spontaneous group and this is different from bbl bbl is already uh, 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 already is uh, organized organized group not a spontaneous group okay okay yes, thank you so much okay welcome and this is the a useful tool to utilize when it's unsure of Uh, what about this ischemia activation? So, what does it mean by ischemia? Anybody knows? Ischemia. But like how much I understand, uh, ischemia activation is like uh, we have un uh, read some basics like anatomy uh, in uh, like in the medical school, and then yes, uh, is... we get a prolapse case. So we will try to uh, analyze what is the uh, actual anatomy and try to solve. So we are activating what we learned in the past. Yes, this is the simple definition of ischemia activation. So ischemia, regarding to the definition of uh, psychology, it is a cognitive framework to concept that help organize and interpret information. And ischemia can be useful because they allow us to talk shortcut in Interpreting the fast amount of information and is available on our environment. So, what does it mean by ischemia activation? A ischemia is representation of a plan in form of models from a physiological perspective. Ischemia is conception of what is common to all members of class. So, in case of Ischemia activation. With teaching clinical topics, we have uh, clinical topics. Students should be a prepared session about basic knowledge, for example, as anatomy or physiology, which is essential to all learners in the group. So, for example, if you give a topic about the urine, urine incontinence, so. Uh, the learner should be uh, prepared <clears throat> tuition or tutorial about the anatomy of your uh, systems and the, path, uh, the physiology. So it is very essential to all the learners in this group. So it is mainly about the basic knowledge. So learning presents the basic knowledge. So this is mean by activation. That is the difference between uh, the this is clear about the activation. So this lecture, learners uh, should have been taught the basic anatomy in medical schools. The teacher would if activate records of basic fact or concept prior to enhancing learning. 
example would be the task providing tutorial to a specialist trainee in years one, year two on management of unit urinary prolapse. The clinical teacher would initially apply a scheme activation to revise the learner's knowledge of pelvic floor anatomy, which had been taught years before, but the knowledge of which is essential to all learners in this group. Uh, I think this is also recall question in February uh, 2020. Uh, this is about the scheme activation. Here is only learner present the basic knowledge. What about the scheme environment? Here is different from the activation. Uh, for example, for a scheme environment, here you can give a tutorial or clinical topics, including basic knowledge and clinical knowledge to solve clinical scenario. Here, there is basic knowledge and also there's clinical knowledge. So this is the difference between ischemia activation and ischemia environment. So ischemia activation, the tutorial mainly about the basic knowledge. We call the basic knowledge. And the scheme environment here about the basic knowledge. This is the more advanced about the basic knowledge and the clinical knowledge to solve the clinical scenario. So this is the useful method of teaching and more advanced learners. In this technique, the learners are encouraged to apply basic concepts clarify the, the understanding and solve the clinical problem. For example, an example would be the use of tutorial on the anatomy and physiology and endocrinology appropriate to amenorrhea, followed by a series of clinical cases, which could include the low post chemotherapy, uh, amenorrhea, Turner syndrome, hyperblactinemia, and complete androgen insensitivity syndrome. So we mix here the basic knowledge, anatomy and physiology and endocrinology with the clinical cases. So this is uh, a definition of ischemia environment. Oh, it is clear. Is it clear? Activation is the mainly concerned about the basic knowledge and environment is about the basic knowledge and the clinical knowledge. Okay. The learner recall what they have experienced in the tutorial and attempt to solve the clinical problem. So what, what is the snow poly? This technique, if the teacher is un in unsure, unsure of the current level of the knowledge of or the skill of the learners. If you're not unsure or unsure about the knowledge or the level, current level of the knowledge of or skills of the learners, you can use snow poly. This is not ideal situation, but it could rise. The discussion may be very basic and unstructured at first because you are not unsure about the level of knowledge. So we'll start with the very basics. However, it is soon becomes obvious and that the knowledge base of the learners is high and the discussion is allowed to snowball. So discussion uh, is allowed to snowball and increase the intensity and the importance. So you can increase the level of knowledge. This describes a process where each individual members of the audience is invited to work alone on a problem or issue for a couple of minutes, then shared to the uh, neighbors for similar lengths of times, the two of them generating a discussion, which they then share with another pair and so on. So it will start with basic, very basic uh, knowledge, then increase the levels, then 
a student will work alone on the problem on a couple of minutes, then can share with the neighbor for the similar times, then the two generating a discussion with the then, then share with another pair. Yeah. So this is the technique of snow pooling. So increase the number of the learning in a couple of minutes, okay? This process can be time consuming. So it is generally suit smaller groups and enough time should be included to get useful feedback from all the groups because the lecture continue or comes to end. So need is, this is one of the disadvantage of this group because it may take times. What is the simple procedural hierarchy? Also, this is the recall question, February 2020. Uh, uh, this is a suitable method for the junior trainee. So we'll discuss. Hierarchy is the system in which members are ranked according to relative authority. In medicine, the authorities arises from the teacher recognized the knowledge of certain matters. In its most basic form, simplified procedural hierarchy is a demonstration by the teacher to the learner or to learners. There is no demand for assessment, evaluation, or feedback. By simple way, it is to show how to do something. This is mean by simplified procedural hierarchy. The teach the technique is efficient and it is used extensively in national health service. It is important to note that there is no mechanism in itself for assessing or testing the learner. Here, just to show uh, to show how to do something for learners. This is about the simplified procedural hierarchy. Uh, the learner is simply show, shown how to do something. For example, a teacher has been asked to instruct junior trainee on how to carry out diagnostic laparoscopy. And the teacher initially shows the trainee how to assemble the laparoscopic equipment. So there is no feedback, just to show to do about how to do how to carry out diagnostic laparoscopy and no, no feedback. This is very important to differentiate between simplified and complex. Is it clear? Complex procedural hierarchy in this technique is involved which develop over the several governments and over the significant time span. In one example, a consultant asked a trainee to assist in operation of total abdominal structure. This is the first steps. After several such operations, during which the educational experience of the trainee consists of observing surgical technique for many times, there is a work between the consultant and the trainee. The consultant would then ask the trainee to describe the operation in order to certain they have crossbeats, the steps, technique, and use of instrument that are vital and safely conducted operation. And the consultant then assists the trainee in the proceeds after several operation with going assessment, evaluation, and feedback, not like symbol. This here, as, as, as we should give assessment and evaluation and feedback. The consultant and trainee would be uh, in a position to judge process. 
I will uh, make summarize for this. So first, start with the consultant as the trainee to assist, okay, in the operation. After several operation, then the trainee, uh, you 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 should describe the step for the trainee and describe the technique and use of instrument. Then several operation, the consultant assist the trainee in operation. And after several uh, operation, then assessment and evaluation and feedback. So this is the step about the complex procedural hierarchy. So what about the Delphi yeah. Delphi technique, each student provide uh, anonymous uh, answer and facilitator that is result of for feedback. The technique is of a process and first aim to get a broad range of option for a group of expert. Uh, the result of the first round of the question when summarized provide the basis for the second round of question. A result from the second round of question feed into the third and final round. I will give you an example about the Delphi technique. Here the Delphi technique is facilitated or coordinate uh, I send the questions through internet or the email to give questionnaire and send for expert. So we'll discuss the steps of Delphi technique. The first step is to choose facilitator. So. In Delphi technique, we need first to the choose a facilitator. And then the second step is to identify your expert. And the step three is to define the problem. Step four, round one question. And step five, round two question. Step six, round three question. And the last step is act on your finding. This is about the step of Delvi technique. This is about seven steps here. This paragraph show the refers you choose the facilitator, then identify your expert. Facilitator seek individual assessment form, a pool of expert. So you choose the expert. The second is identify your expert. Expert respond to the request, receive feedback, and receive their response. And step three is define the problem. Here, define the problem. And step four is to round one question about the problem and the two questions, step step uh, five and step six is three question and the last is uh, steps is to act on your finding this is the symbol about the delphi technique i have a major seven steps starting from the uh, choose facilitator expert and then uh, question uh, choose question Round one question, around two question, around three question, and the final step seven is act on your final. This is ab about Delvi technique. What about the fish bowl discussion? Uh, fish bowl discussion. In, full, in fish pool discussion, students sit inside the fish pool, actively 
participate in discussion by asking questions and sharing their opinion while the students standing outside listening carefully to the idea presented. Students take turns in, in these roles, so they practice by being both contributed and listener in a group of discussion. And this strategy is specifically useful when you want to, to make sure all students participate in a discussion, when you want to help students reflect on what a good discussion look like, and when you need structure for discussion, controversial or difficult topics. Fishbowl discussion make for excellent writing activity of an, an it's in question or idea that a student can explore more deeply in independent assignment. We'll give example for this. In this uh, technique, we select our topics, and this is the step for visual technique. Set up the room, prepare for discussion, and discuss norm and rules, and debrief. This is about fishbowl. In case of select our topics, yeah, almost any topic suitable for a fishbowl discussion. And how to set up a room? Here, yeah, enough rooms around the circle and for remaining students to observe. Okay, you should set the room for uh, two circle and prepare for discussion, so fishbowl is most effective when students have a few minutes to prepare idea and question in advance. So uh, give uh, time for a student to prepare idea and question in advance. And what about the discuss norm and rules? Here you set the class for 10 to 15 minutes before announcement and prepare for instruction of student in audience and should they take in notes and advise the student to take in notes and advise student to listening uh, this is about discuss and deprive and who are after the discussion you can ask about a student about the reflect on how they think the discussion went and they learn from it and this is, you, you should uh, take feedback from the student about the discussion and the benefit and uh, what they learn from it. This is about fishbowl technique. This is the two circle here. Yeah. Here about the moderate to circle and this is about audience circles. Here, yeah, this is a session about fish bull. Nick. Uh, what about the director of observe proceeds with feedback? Uh, the teacher observe the learner carry out a task. And this could be the insertion, for example, in the willing urinary catheter and try trying contraceptive device or vaginal fishery. If the learner failed, three steps are integral to the method of teaching. First, the teacher must observe, preferably record the finding and make a judgment. The second step is to inform the learner of the opinion that has been formed and the demonstrate how the procedure should have been done. And the, in the third step, which is advice to learn exactly where they went wrong to point and inadequate scores. So this is about the three steps of directly observing 
uh, proceed with feedback. Our, for example, if you want to insert insertion of uh, individual individual in, uh, urinary catheters, first observed, then demonstrate the rate of proper way to insert the catheter, and instead where you give the layman feedback about the wrong or to correct himself mistake. This is about simple by about simple way of director observing proceed with feedback. This is an example already given. This is about director observing proceed with feedback. What about the directly observed therapy? What about the direct observed therapy? This is a method of drug administration in which healthcare professional watch a person take each dose of medication. Directly observed therapy is used to ensure the person receive and take all medication are prescribed and the monitor is born to treatment. Directly observed therapy is widely used to manage tuberculosis disease in HIV, HIV treatment. Directly observed therapy is sometimes called directly administered antiretroviral therapy. This is uh, simply about the directly observed therapy. This is Victor Shaw, direct observing therapy. So this is uh, about uh, uh, method of teaching. So this is question one, who will start? Question one. Yes, yes, doctor. Okay. Question one, which is the following educational strategies does not promote deep learning and critical thinking? Uh, a lecture, problem-based learning, self-directed learning, stimulated environment, uh, task-based learning. Uh, a so here, lecture. ask about the service learning, because uh, most of these are provide deep learning, except one. What is your answer? A, lectures. A, yes. Lecture, you are right. Yes, the correct answer here is the lecture. Because only the retained information is about 5%. Yes. So, okay. Thank you. So question two. I will come to once. Yes, you can. <laughs> Uh, a small group of uh, obstetric and gynecological gynecology training in their first years of training need to be a tough neonatal resuscitation, keeping in mind the pros and cons of the virus method of teaching, which is the method appropriate method for teaching that can be adopted for this scenario. Yes. Uh, so you have six the, about the neonatal resuscitation yes what is the uh, most appropriate method for teaching okay you have five choice here uh simulated uh, simulated, simulated teaching yes simulated teaching because this is for the safety of the patient so it's better it's to do it in the mannequin not in in the real cases so it is better to do a uh, neonatal resuscitation in Manikan as better for simulated teaching. Yes, you're right. Okay. Can this justification? Yes, this answer is simulated uh, training as the teaching is for a small group. Interactive teaching is preferred in order to direct teaching to the individual needs of the uh, members of the group. Hence, a uh, lecture is not preferred. Simulated teaching will give the individual's memoir uh, hands on experience in the management of baby needing resuscitation. Uh, this would be more appropriate than 
theory based training uh, training uh, where there is not hands on experience and you need to as a you need to resuscitation is, is a, a skill that is, is needed in emergency situation it is not ideal uh, to to be included in base bedside teaching okay thank you dr abir thank you Next, we will share. Hello, Dr. Fat. Can I try? Yes. Hello, Dr. Vishpia. Welcome. Yeah. yeah thank you. Okay. Identify the correct teaching methods for the statement below describes each answer can be used once or multiple times. Okay. This method puts the emphasis on who is doing the learning and that the learning outcome have been achieved. Okay. Okay. Can I see the options? Yeah, this is the definition of self-directed. Yes, self-directed. Self-directed learning. Self -directed learning. Yes. yes. Answer. Question five. Students work together to identify and solve a clinical question. It is problem-based learning. Yes, this is exactly the definition of problem-based learning. Uh, question six. Uh, allow student to choose appropriate topics to learn at a convenient time, place, and location for them. E-learning. Yes, no? e-learning. E-learning. E yes. Because okay. here we choose appropriate topics to learn and appropriate times specific time oh, right location for them so this is the e led of the question seven method used to generate a large number of ideas and suggestions okay this is a definition of suggestion of idea brainstorm uh, brainstorming yeah, brainstorming yes you're right yeah Thank you, Dr. Wishby. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Next. Yes. Next. Yes. Dr. Mtinan. Dr. May. Uh, yes, Doctor. Okay. Dr. Mike, how are you? Uh, Alhamdulillah, fine. Okay. Uh, you are asked to initiate idea for research among a group of junior trainee. You get the trainee together and everyone uh, contributes idea experience and different uh, perspective. This is all recorded onto the Philip chart. So, uh, brainstorming. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, here is the brain storming. Brainstorming. Sorry. Yeah, because you initiate idea. Okay, this is yes, I, the key I word for that. Mm. The brainstorming. Yes, question. Uh, question is uh, the lecture gave the student a tutorial on the anatomy, physiology, and the crime appropriate to amenorrhea, followed by a series of clinical cases, which including uh, post chemotherapy amenorrhea, ternal syndrome, 
uh, hyperprolactinemia and the complete and the and sensitivity syndrome. The learners recall what they have experienced in the tutorial and attempt to solve the clinical problem. Uh, yes, uh, this uh, tutorial followed by clinical scenario, this uh, schema uh, refinement. This is, yes, you are right. Because here, uh, involved learning in the tutorial, there is anatomy, basic knowledge, and there is clinical. Clinical species. scenario. Yes, scenario about the Turner syndrome and hyperblactinemia. This is uh, schema refinement. Yes. The consultant asked. Mm. The consultant asked a trainee to assist in the operation of the total abdominal hysterectomy after a several such operation during which the educational experience of the trainee consists of observe, uh, observing surgical technique. The consultant then asked the trainee to describe the operation in order to ascertain that he have grasped the steps, technique, and the use of the instrumental that are vital to save safely conducted operation. The consultant then assisted the trainee in the, in the procedure. After the several operation with the ongoing assessment, evaluation and feedback, uh, the consultant asked the trainee to carry out the operation while assisted by another trainee. Uh, the, consultant, uh, the consultant would be immediately available. Uh, okay, this is a complex uh, hierarchy uh, method. This is a hierarchy, yes. Yes, this is complex because hierarchy. the consultant here is asked the trainee to assist, okay. assist in operation. Then after several, yeah. then describe the technique and the consultant uh, assist the trainee. So this is a complex procedural uh, hierarchy. Yes. Question 10. Uh, you are required to lead the group of the senior uh, senior senior trainee on concepts in the clinical management of uh, hair stress. You begin by activation, the recall of the relevant physiotherapy and biochemistry, and give them tutorial to clarify their understanding of the basic concept. Then you give the group a series of clinical problems in which the health tourism was presented complaint. The trainee recall what have experience in the tutorial and solve the clinical problem. This is also a schema uh, refinement. Uh, schema refinement because it is clinical the scenario. basic and there is the, a group of series of clinical problems discussed. So it is a yes. schema refinement. Okay. Yes. Okay, question 11 and 12. Thank you, Dr. Amai. Continue. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Welcome. Thank you, Dr. Amai. Thank you. Dr. Amai. Dr. Sana. Uh, sorry, Dr. Fat. Uh, I missed the session. I thought it is uh, uh, 5 p.m. GMT. So, sorry. What? I can't see it. Yeah. No, no problem. Welcome. Raisha, Dalia. Dr. Yes, doctor. You are required to lead the development of the uh, consequence on the educational e uh, expectation of medical students in the gynecological operation theater. Uh, your group consists of 40 medical students who have had limited experience in the specialty and who are about to start their uh, clerkship. Individuals are asked to think about the issue themselves, then you uh, pair them and then uh, pair join up into two groups of 20 each. 
the large two group continue working on and and then join up to reach the uh, consequence uh, can i see the uh, option okay the option doctor please yeah so so Yes. Uh, is it? Uh, uh, I'm not sure. Is it uh, D? Okay, we, we can go back for the scenario. Then. Look for this. Okay. Yeah. What? What I understand, it is made in groups, group like uh, bigger groups. Medical. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Individual are asked to think alone because start one by one student think and then to two groups of twenty of each. This is the the technique. What is this technique? Uh, I'm not sure, but I understand it's the uh, is it the um, goldfish technique? No, no, this is snowball. Snowball technique. No. No. Yeah, because this is a technique start from the one student, then to neighboring student, and then uh, the two students for the uh, other groups. And we said this is the con time consuming. Okay, it take okay. a lot of time. Uh, this is the, about the snow pulling. The last question, okay. Okay. Um, you are required to teach a group of junior trainee on subject of change in uh, postmenopausal women. In the first uh, instance, you ask the trainee to recall their knowledge of basic endocrine, uh, endocrinology. Uh, concerning the hypothalamic pituitary ovarian axis uh, is it the schema activation that you know their uh, basic about the uh, uh, yes about the only basic the basic what they know about the, the basic yes yes you are right you are right you are right this is schema activation the last question this is february 2020 The last question. Me, me doctor? You, you can, you can do it. Okay. Okay, Dr. Sasson, yes. A spontaneous group of students to solve projects. What's the option here? Yeah. A spontaneous group for a student to solve project. So the suggestion of about the idea. So it is the, the definition of brainstorming. Yes. Brainstorming. Yeah. Brainstorming because it's a spontaneous group for discussion, for suggestion, for idea to solve yeah. a project. So this is the difference between brainstorming and uh, PBL. Second one. A teacher demonstrating a procedure for a trainee without any feedback uh, and assessment. Yes. Uh, this is here. F without simple. any feedback and assessment. This is the simple, simple procedural hierarchy. Because if you have assessment and feedback, this is a complex procedural uh -huh. hierarchy. Yeah, just to, 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 to show how to do something. This is the symbol. Simple procedural hierarchy. Okay. Okay. 